Welcome back to Animal House Calls on CP24 and on Animal Planet. Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides. What an incredible service. And Jenny Gladish joins us live with a dog in training, your foster pup, Yale. Yeah. How, how is it going with Yale? You know, Yale's doing really well, Anne. Oh, um, <laughs> there's always a little bit of a, a rough puppy patch, um, sort of the terrible twos, if you will. Um, but he's really adjusting well. Um, he's settling into the studio really well here. Um, lots of temptations and things to look at and things to see, but um, pretty calm and, and cool as a cucumber for a, for a seven-month-old. And as a dog guide, a foster mom, which you are right now, and a lot of people have uh, signed on to the program, and that's just so great. But what is it that you are uh, teaching or observing at this stage in a dog guide's life? Yeah, so foster families are basically 24-7 volunteers. So they commit to roughly the first year of the puppy's life, and what they do is they're responsible for basic obedience, uh, so reinforcing the sits, the stays, that sort of thing, um, but also socialization, so making sure that that dog gets out and about, that they go to the library, they go to the grocery store, uh, they go to all those places that when they're eventually placed with their future handler, that they're going to go in their daily lives, so everything, nothing's a surprise to them. And there are many directions that the dog guide can go once in serious training. Uh, are there things that you're looking for that might help everyone decide where where it, Yale, for instance, will go. For sure. So there's six programs um, that Lions Foundation trains for. So he could be a canine vision dog, um, assisting someone who has a visual impairment or blindness. He could be a seizure response dog, um, helping someone with epilepsy. Uh, he could be an autism assistance dog, helping a child or teen on the autism spectrum. So they'll start to look at um, what he's naturally good at. And it's sort of like picking a major in university. There's certain things that some dogs are great at um, and really excel at, so um, they match them to the program. Jenny, how important is it that your clients have a access to these incredible dogs? Well, the need is great. Um, we have a wait list in, in all six programs, and we are constantly raising funds and awareness uh, to keep providing dogs to Canadians uh, from all provinces and territories. Oat Dog coming up this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. That's going to be quite an amazing event. Uh, tell me a little bit about it and why you're involved. Yeah, so we're lucky to be um, participating in Oat Dog uh, this year. Um, an amazing event started off as a dog fashion show basically and I think sort of spiraled from there uh, so we'll be there with uh, some of our foster families um, with dog guides future dog guides um, like Yale um, that will be doing their thing um, you can ask questions uh, pet them that sort of thing and also a very special dog um, who was inducted into the Purina Animal Hall of Fame uh, will be on hand as well and that is uh, Nettle and we had Nettle on Animal House Calls along with the two young ladies that t that Nettle helped Brooke and Jade. They suffer from type 1 diabetes and celiac disease, and Nettle has alerted uh, his the family, the girl's family, when there have been problems. Yeah, so to be inducted into the Animal Hall of Fame for a service dog, uh, service dogs save lives all the time, so um, they're sort of everyday heroes, if you will. Uh, but the Purina Animal Hall of Fame recognizes service animals that really go above and beyond, and Nettle for sure. I mean, she does double duty. There's twins that she's watching over. Uh, and she's been really amazing at the night alerts and alerting to diabetic lows that happen um, at night when the family um, can't, you know, be monitoring them around the clock. Jenny Gladish and Yale, thank you so much for joining us live on Animal House Calls. Thank you for having us, Anne.